based on her lived experience growing up on her small reserve in northern BC to ensure that intersectionality and interconnectedness is at the forefront of the environmental narratives we hear every day. This to build power and to help others see our stake in fighting back against the status quo that is robbing us of our forests. Everyone, please join me welcoming Janelle LaPointe. Hadi, Suzy, Janelle LaPointe, Stella Penn, Inkez, Luxilu, Asli, Alu, and Michelle Baker, Abba, and Renee LaPointe, Hatsu, and Emma Baker, Hatsian, and William Baker. Hello, everybody. Hadi! Hadi! <laughs> My name is Janelle LaPointe. I am Caribbean Clan from Stalaten First Nation. It's located in the northern interior of so called British Columbia. I have been doing climate justice and indigenous rights organizing since 2018. I was attending Thompson Rivers University. I was in my third year. I was feeling pretty homesick and I attended this university awards gala and they had an elder from close to my territory from the Cosby and she was giving a land acknowledgement and beginning with an opening prayer. And she reminded me so much of my Atsu, Emma Baker, and she was telling a story about our responsibility as guests on Subquamic lands in, in so-called Kamloops. And I was closing my eyes and I was listening to her words and I was feeling a connection to these lands and to my own lands. I was missing my grandmother, missing my culture. And when I opened my eyes, I saw this sweet elder who had just given such a generous prayer and welcoming being quickly rushed off stage by men in suits and followed by a great big $500,000 check from then Kinder Morgan, now known as Trans Mountain Pipeline. So what I was seeing was a very visual representation of how so-called Canada has always operated. A swift removal of an Indigenous elder to make way for money that was buying the consent of the university despite there being an ongoing resistance from the Sequoia people whose land we were on. So that's where I started organizing, but my activism started long before that. Um, in many ways, protecting the land and water is my birthright. And I made it pretty evident when my third grade teacher had us present on our favorite animals at school. So I don't know what your favorite animal was when you were around eight years old, but for most kids, it's usually like a puppy or a kitty or maybe like a lion or a tiger. And I got up in front of my class and explained to everyone what my favorite animal was, and still is, and that is wild sockeye salmon. So my love for wild salmon is very much what drives my work. Um, it was my starting point, but my love for salmon alone is not enough. And so today I'm here to say, um, I know we're all here because our love for forests and our love for trees. And even though I wish that was enough, it's not. I don't want to come here and talk to you as an environmentalist or an activist, but rather as simply a human being, a very shy res kid who grew up on my lands and was very observant. And what I witnessed was the lands I call home um, being overlogged, being clear-cutted. I grew up along the Highway 16 that was forced through my territory, which is known as a Highway of Tears, where Indigenous women and girls go disproportionately missing and murdered. And what I noticed is that the same forces that were dis destroying these cultural sites, the forests, the places that were destroying the salmon stalks and the streams, it was connected to the mill closures, it was connected to the unsafe working conditions of settler communities in my area. So. Our love is not enough for a single being, for the salmon and for the trees. When Indigenous people are the ones that bear the brunt of the climate crisis, have been on the front, the front lines of the old growth forest resistance, and have been the strongest force in so-called Canada for resisting extraction. Our love for a single being, like a tree or a salmon, isn't enough when um, Workers who are being exploited just as much as the land are taught to be our enemies, are taught that they're not part of a movement to fight against the common enemy that are the corporate executives. It's not enough when we are taught to turn away from people who don't agree with us 
um, because their fears are being exploited by powers that only serve the corporate elite that are making money off our backs. And so I'm here today to hold David Eby, our premier's uh, feet to the fire, his commitment to act on Accelerate Old Growth, which means putting down the chainsaws today and no longer logging these precious ecosystems. But to also not forget the communities that are exploited and are divided. Um, and that includes indigenous communities that are supporting the extraction because they are left no other option from the settler state and the poverty that is forced upon them. So we're also asking David Eby and the government um, and the federal government to reparate all the money they made off indigenous lands to make sure they're returning it back to the community, returning land back to the nations so that deferrals are economically viable and indigenous nations can use their governance systems and their way of taking care of the land and each other that has allowed them to survive for millennia. And also asking, yeah. yeah. And also asking them to re to invest in a just transition for the workers that are trying to provide for their loved ones, just like all of us are, and ensure that they're able to have a sustainable industry and ways of to provide to their family and their loved ones that is not dependent on destroying the precious ecosystems that we all depend on. So with these calls to actions to the government, it also means looking inwards, looking at ourselves and looking at each other. So a reminder that a love for a single species is not enough. You have to have love for each other. That means the people that are here right now, right today. And also to always be thinking of the people that have not joined us and all the reasons why they may have not. That has everything to do with the corporate elite, with the billionaires hiding behind our government, being beholden to, and our government being beholden to corporate interests that leave us divided and leave us suffering. I think that veil has lifted now more than ever where we see the rising cost of living. We see um, opioid epidemics and drug poisoning crisis where we're seeing the last of the old growth being destroyed. We're seeing pipelines pushed through indigenous territories all while the billionaires put more money in their pockets. So let's let's um, rem yeah remember what systems we're fighting against. Let's extend the love to that we have for the trees, the love for the wild salmon, the love for all the species that were so um, beautifully painted and marched with us down today, and to always focus on the enemy and create a movement so powerful that our governments, our so-called pro progressive governments, can no longer be beholden to the corporate interests and the democracy can belong back to us, the people. So I want to say thank you. In my language, we have quite a few words for thank you, and the one I use when I'm speaking is snachalia. And snachalia was told to me by the same elder who was very rudely rushed off stage to make way for that big fat check. She explained it to me as a deep thank you. That means my spirit is thanking you for my spirit for your spirit. So Snachalia for being here, Snachalia for the organizers and the volunteers, um, and Snachalia for allowing me to speak today. Yeah. Oh.